Hi, this is Rufus Philpott from Down to the Bone, and you're watching Elements of Jazz TV. Elements of Jazz, your visual jazz experience. Okay, so people often talk about Down to the Bone as having a, a acid jazz sound. Yeah, so I guess the influences date back from the 70s stuff. You know, everything from the funk stuff that was coming over from America to like Northern Soul and the funk scene in England too. You know, it started off as a more of a studio thing with uh, Stuart Wade, you know, producing the stuff. But then it grew into a, a live phenomenon too because, you know, the albums really took off and then it was a question of getting the live band to promote it. It's great. Really a fun club to play, so thank you, thank you teams for having us. Myself, Rufus, Reginald, William, John, Philpot on the bass guitar and announcements. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. <laughs> My first gig was actually covering for a friend of mine who was the original bass player called Paul Turner, and Paul's playing with Jamiroquai now. And that was in, I think it was in 2000, I flew out to a club in Atlanta, because um, I happened to be living in New York at the time. So my first gig with a man. And then I didn't meet Stu until 2003, and I flew into Milwaukee to do a gig, I think it was. And we met, and he was, you know, he seemed to like how I did the band. So he asked me about, you know, joining full time. And then from then, I was in the band for a while, but it was a different incarnation. And then that band kind of, you know, fell by the wayside. And then what happened was a couple of years ago, I was uh, talking with Stu back in England and, and Ron Moss too. And they were like, well, would you like to, you know, get the band back up and running again? And I was like, yeah, but let's make it a little different. I want to bring in a couple of younger players and just, you know, some guys I think will add to the sound. So that's really how it came about. I guess, you know, people often comment about the, the energy of Down to the Bone. It's kind of like, you know, like one of the albums, you know, like Supercharged, you know, having that kind of high energy feel. I think it's because uh, all the guys in the band, although we play sometimes on some of the festivals where there's a bunch of guys doing more like the smooth jazz or, the, you know, like contemporary kind of pop jazz stuff, we're not really that sound. Like we're on those festivals sometimes, but I think it's because of what I was saying earlier about the, the sound grew out of that 70s thing, you know, the funk stuff, like, so that gives it a little more edge maybe than, than, than some, some things. And all of us in the band, you know, we don't just play one kind of style of music. Um, myself, uh, Katista, saxophone player, was supposed to flute, you know, um, the RGR drummer, Gabe, trumpet player, you know, we, we've got, you know, really good bunch of guys in the band who all have backgrounds, I guess, that have included some serious jazz, you know, playing. And I'm not talking about like smooth jazz, but like, you know, straight ahead jazz, bebop or mod jazz or fusion or whatever. So if you bring that kind of proficiency on your instrument and that ability to solo in stuff where it's more like a club, you know, funk groove, it's kind of a cool combination because then you've still got that kind of danceable element. But you've got guys who are really like playing quite aggressively and with an edge. So I think it means that the band has a fairly distinctive sound because of that combination of two what would seem to be disparate elements, but they actually work really well together. Thank you. 
people ask us about influences in the band, like my own and the bands. And um, I guess within the band, I mean, Stuart, I know because we talk about this. I mean, he loves like stuff like Herbie Hancock, the Headhunters, you know, the '70s stuff. He's a big fan of people like Roy Ayers, who we just played with. You know, we did that uh, Capital Jazz cruise. And Roy played with us, and we played some of Roy's stuff. We played some of ours that he's done on a Down the Bone album. So that's a great example of sort of like the influences, and also things like. Um, I guess like Tower of Power, you know, like the R&B funk thing, you know, the Bay Area stuff too. You know, you can hear that in some of the grooves. Um, you know, guys in the band, I mean, like I mentioned before, everyone's influenced by jazz stuff, whether it's the Miles uh, recordings from like the 50s, like with Coltrane and, and Paul Chambers, whether it's the latest stuff, you know, whether it's Cannibal Adderley, you know, whether it's when you get into more modern stuff, like the m bass stuff, like Steve Coleman and Five Elements, Dap Theory, all the real hip kind of stuff. I'm being asked how it feels to be a, a band leader, a, a bassist extraordinaire, and a, a member of Down the Bone, which is pioneering and blazing the acid jazz trail across the world. Wow, how do I answer that? Um, it feel, feels good, it's fun, you know. It's a fun band to play in, a fun band to lead. You know, the musicians are great in the band. They're all very uh, giving of their time and energy. Um, you know, I'm lucky because I moved from London to play with some of my musical heroes out here. And I've got to do that, you know, I mean, it was great to play with Roy Ayers the other day. You know, I saw Roy in 1990 in Ronnie Scott's club in England. And I met his drummer at the time, was a guy called Jeremy Gaddy. And when I moved to New York, Jeremy had me sit in on a gig that he was doing with a great African bass player, Richard Bowen. And Richard's definitely a big of mine too. And so it kind of comes full circle, you know, so it's exciting to do that. And, you know, moving out here, I mean, I'm lucky I have a band. Um, Scott Henderson, great guitar player, used to play with Joey Zaunel from Weather Report. Um, I played with a trio with Mitch Foreman and Marvin Smitty Smith, who was the drummer for the Tonight Show for 15 years. And Smitty used to play with uh, Winton and Brand from ourselves, you know. So for me getting to play with those guys, I mean, you know, I mean, Smitty's played with the greatest bass players on earth, you know, as is Scott Henderson, you know. So it's, it's fun to have seen those guys in the, you know, as being an audience member. And then now to play with them. Same with Mitch Foreman. I know Mitch has played here at Spagatini's and Mitch has played with Rick Braun and Kurt Whalem. But then he also has played with John Schofield. He's worked with Wayne Shorter and uh, John McLaughlin. And I saw Mitch when I was 16 when he was playing with John McLaughlin in London. So, you know, it's like 25 years later, you know, it sort of comes full circle. Again, you go from being that kid, literally like a kid in the audience watching the show. And then, you know, Mitch actually played, we met on a Down to the Bone gig. Mitch was playing keyboards with us in 2003 at a club in Oakland. I believe. And, and I was like, wow, the last time I saw this guy, I was 13, you know, watching him play with John McLaughlin. And now he's in the band and I'm giving him like cues, like, no, oh, here, get ready this, this section. You know? And it was, it's fun. You know, it's, it's a great feeling to feel that the people that were your idols are now, in some cases, your peers. You, know? you never stop looking up to them, but they become, you know, musical colleagues and friends. Thank you.
were asking, you know, what what uh, future holds for Down to the Bone, and I guess you know one of the good things is the band is picking up momentum after having that little. You know, break. the nice thing about this is, you know, word is spreading that the band is back out playing, and you know, it's it's got a. I would say that everyone I've spoken to without fail has commented when you meet people after the show that they like the new band. Uh, this guy came up to me and said, you know, and he followed the band like for years, we've been to 20 years. And he said, look, he goes, I feel you're playing the music for the band now. He goes, it's very unselfish. I feel there's no egos on stage. I really feel you care about the music. You know, there's a lot of fun on stage and, and you know, hopefully people are entertained by it, but it really is about the music. And I think that's, you know, the future. We've also got a new album. Let me uh, show you. Down to the bone of the main ingredients. There you go, folks. Check it out. Um, this is, we're going to be playing three tunes from this tonight, uh, which are three of my favorites on the album. And you will find this uh, everywhere. You can actually also go to, uh, well, let me just read this out for you. www.tripinmusic.com. Trip in Music. And go down to the Bone website too. Facebook me, Rufus Philpot, R-U-F-U-S-P-H-I-L-P-O-T. And you can add me as a friend. We'll keep you updated on all the Down to the Bone activities. So in the future, we've got gigs coming in already for next year. I know we're hoping to be in uh, Milwaukee. I think we've got a couple in California. Um, I think where else we've just been asked. Uh, I think we're, yeah, we've got stuff coming up all the time. So just keep, you know, Sign up on Facebook, sign up on the website for the mailing list. We'll let you know. say how much they're enjoying the band um, it, it really means a lot when people are actually you know have followed the band for years and have all the albums and they come up with a stack of albums from the sign and you know even I mean this is just really makes it you know great to be a musician when you know people are touched by the music so I, I really want to say thank you to everyone um, for people who've supported me as a bass player and, and followed me which I guess some of you are out there because I got a couple of thousand people on Facebook who want to be my friend um, I'd like to say thanks too. Uh, it's really, really gratifying, you know, because being a musician is a challenging life sometimes. And having people who care about the music and actually take the time and the money to come to see you is appreciated. So if you're watching this and you are one of those people, please know that we're really aware of that and it's one of the main reasons why we keep playing and doing what we do. So thank you. <laughs>